Now for an overview of distributions. Distribution is another name for a set of numbers. The numbers can be based on data you gathered as a result of measuring people or things. The numbers can be based on a mathematical rule. Every distribution has a mean, a median, perhaps a mode, variance and standard deviation. In a population distribution, the properties are parameters. In a sample, the properties are statistics. Here is a heads up on what we will cover. We will get distributions of data, distributions that have to do with probability, a family of a particular type of probability distribution called binomial distribution, an important family of distributions called normal distributions, and an extremely important concept in statistics called sampling distributions. We organize and visualize distributions so that we can see trends in our data. Let's learn how to do this. Here we work with a distribution. There's a set of numbers resulting from measurements. Our measurements are the maximum temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit for the month of January in the years 1972 through 2015 in Madison, Wisconsin. We will refer to this as Jan Max. And here they are. I put them into a table with 11 rows and four columns so all the values would fit on the screen. Looking at 44 numbers is not always the easiest way to spot trends. One thing we can do is put the years into intervals, say 4 years, and find the average in each interval. Here is a table of years and means with the average formulas already entered. So you would not have to watch me enter them 11 times. Click on a cell, shows you the details in a formula bar. We can easily visualize this table with a line graph. Select the averages in cell E2 through E12. Click the insert tab, then the charts area. Select line chart with lines and markers. After the chart opens, right click inside it and choose select data. And then click the edit button on the right side. Now. We can put the years on the x-axis, click OK, then OK again, and there they are. Still another way to organize a distribution is to put the temperatures into intervals of say 5 degrees each, regardless of year, and count the frequency in each interval. So here is the resulting frequency distribution. And here is a graph of the frequency distribution, which is called a histogram. On the spreadsheet, click on the frequency tab. We will use the statistical array function frequency to create a frequency distribution from our data. First, select the array where the frequencies will appear. That's our cell I2 through I8. From the statistical menu, select frequency. In the data array box, enter the cells that hold the data, cells B2 through B45. In the bins array box, enter the cells H2 through H8 that hold the upper ends of the intervals. Now, because this is an array function, don't click OK. Press these three keys together, Control, Shift and Enter. Then the frequencies appear in cells I2 through I8. Cells to graph this distribu distribution, select I2 through I8 and insert a column chart. And let's put the intervals on the X axis by right clicking and selecting data. Click edit. Access label range gets the cells G2 through G8. Click OK and OK again. Then you can use a plus sign to add elements to the graph like excess labels. In a cumulative frequency distribution, each frequency in an interval is added to all the frequencies in the interval below it. Here is a graph of the cumulative frequency distribution. It is a cumulative frequency histogram. Here is how to create the cumulative frequencies and the histogram in Excel. In cell J2, type equals and then click cell I2 and enter. 
Now in cell J3 type equals click cell I3 plus J2 and enter. And now auto fill the values. To create the histogram, select the cumulative frequencies in cells J2 through J8 and insert a column chart. And once again, we will put the intervals on the X axis by right clicking. Select data and edit. And access level range with cells G2 through G8. Click on OK. OK again. And that's our cumulative frequency histogram. Now let's look at another way to graph a frequency distribution. Frequency polygons. Here is the data we worked with before. It is the high temperature in degrees Fahrenheit for January. I call it Gen Max in Madison, Wisconsin in the years 1972 through 2015. View what it looks like for our data. And you can create a cumulative frequency polygon too. To create these frequency polygons in Excel, you would use the line charts we used earlier. A nice feature of frequency polygons is that you can put two of them on the same graph and compare. You are comparing January to March for medicine. Let's see how to do this in Excel. On the spreadsheet, column B holds the Jane.max data and column C holds the March max data for medicine. In order to create two frequency polygons on one chart, we have to abandon a line chart we used before. This time we use a different chart type, a scatter chart with straight lines and markers. Now I have already calculated the frequencies for January and for March. The March frequencies begin at the 48 interval midpoint because medicine had no longer March max temperatures for those years. First, select cells E2 through F10 for January data. Then insert the scatter with a straight lines and markers. To add the March data, right click and select the data. Click add. We won't worry about series name right now, but series X values begin in cells E7 and end in cell E15. Tape on the keyboard to the series Y values. And now we will add the frequencies G7 through G15. Click on OK and OK again. And there they are. And as always, you can use that plus sign outside the chart to add elements to the graph. Apparently, it is usually warmer in March than in January in Madison, Wisconsin. And this is how you create two frequency polygons in one graph in Excel.